الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز من كان يريد حرث الآخرة نزد له في حرثه ومن كان يريد حرث الدنيا نؤته منها وما له أم لهم شركاء شرعوا لهم من الدين ما لم يأذن به الله ولولا كلمة الفصل لقضي بينهم وإن الظالمين لهم عذاب أليم ترى الظالمين مشفقين من ما كسبوا وهو واقع بهم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات في روضات الجنات لهم ما يشاءون عند ربهم ذلك هو ذلك الذي يبشر الله عباده الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربى ومن يقترف حسنة نزد له فيها حسنا ويستجيب الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ويزيدهم من فضله والكافرون لهم عذاب شديد ولو بسط الله الرزق لعباده لبغوا في الأرض ولكن ينزل بقدر ما يشاء
Thank, Thank you, brothers and sisters, for this uh, beautiful reminder of how the impact of Nomad Hussein's tragedy, not just, not just on the battlefield, but even before, leaving his family and his children in Medina, and the impact that it had on us individuals. And alhamdulillah, we are given the blessing of relieving that tragedy. Let's give them a lot of salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, the followers of Hal Bayt have a long tradition and history of expressing their sorrow for these tragedies. And because of this, the Mainstay Foundation has been holding every year a Husseini Expressions Competition. The Husseini Expressions Competition is open to ages 5 to 24. If you or anyone who would like to express their sorrow for this tragedy for Imam Hussein through art, poetry, presentations, or any other form, you can register at www.muharram slash he. The deadline to register is 11.59 on August 4th, and the competition will be held this Saturday uh, on August 6th. Now, Aside from all the other projects that the Macy Foundation is holding, the Macy Foundation for seven years uh, has, a, has been an ongoing project of publishing books. And we've, alhamdulillah, published over 30 books uh, so far. Uh, you can find some of those books, or all of those books, actually, uh, on the table outside. A lot of them are also available, or all of them are also available on Amazon.com. One of our most recent publications uh, is titled This My Love Isn't Goodbye by Sheikh Paul McCoy, also known as Sheikh Hanif Muhammad, uh, who is a revert to Islam. And so uh, he had the opportunity, alhamdulillah, to go to uh, Iraq and to visit the holy shrines and the holy lands there. And he has a book writing about his uh, experiences, his spiritual journey uh, to Islam and through those holy lands. And so if you'd like to uh, go on that journey with him, you pick up a copy either uh, in the back or um, on Amazon.com. Now, let's proceed to the section that we've all been waiting for, to the presentation and the words of wisdom from Hajj Jalal Mughniya. Hajj Jalal is a uh, practicing attorney with the uh, Honigman LLP, where he advises um, innovators uh, and entrepreneurs. He is also a member of the Board of Directors at the Mainstay Foundation. He is a you know, well-known uh, lecturer and author with more than seven published books. Uh, his most recent book is Hussein, the Saga of Hope. Let's welcome him with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, 
convey to our Master, and Imam al-Mahdi, the guide who is to fulfill your commands. May your blessings be upon him and his immaculate fathers. On behalf of all of the believing men and women, O oh Allah, I ask you to convey this to our Master in the East and in the West, in the plains and in the mountains, the lands and the seas, and on behalf of my parents, convey to him blessings that are as weighty as your throne, as much as the ink of your words, and as many as that which is counted by your knowledge and encompassed by your book. O oh Allah, I renew for him in the beginning of this day and throughout the days of my life a pledge, a covenant, and an allegiance to which I commit myself and from which I neither convert nor change. O oh Allah, make me of his supporters, his champions, and those who hurry in fulfilling his directives, those who follow his commands, those who defend him, those who precede others in implementing his will, and those who fall as martyrs between his hands. Ya Allah, if death that you made inevitable and certain, accumbent upon your servants, stands between me and him, then take me out of my grave, using my shroud as my dress, unsheathing my sword, holding my lance in my hand, magnificent presence, his praiseworthy brow, delight my eyes by letting me have a look at him and expedite his relief, make his reappearance easy, clear a spacious place for him, guide me to follow his course, give success to his cause and confirm his strength. Ya Allah, construct your lands through him and refresh your servants by him. Ya Allah, for you have said and true are your words, corruption has appeared in the land and the sea on account of what the hands of men have brought. So Ya Allah, show us your vicegerent. Ya Allah, show us your vicegerent, the son of your prophet, and the namesake of your messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, so that he shall rip any wrong that he will face, and he shall confirm the truth. Ya Allah, make him the shelter to whom your wronged servants shall resort to, the supporter of those who have no supporter but you, Ya Allah the reviver of the laws of your book and the constructor of all of the signs of your religion and the instructions of your prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please include him in those who protect you protect from the domination of the aggressors. Ya Allah, please delight your prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings be upon him and his household, as well as all of those who followed him in his proclamation by making us see him. Ya Allah, and have mercy upon our dishonor after him. Ya Allah, relieve this community from our grief through presenting him to us and expediting his advent for us. Surely they think he is far, but we know him to be near. I ask you in the name of your mercy, O most merciful one. Salawat. Brothers and sisters, who had the honor of bringing a copy of the Holy Quran with them tonight? Raise it in your right hand. Do you have the honor? Do you have the honor to raise the Holy Quran in your right hand? If you do not have it tonight, I ask you don't miss out on that honor tomorrow night. But it's okay. If you don't have the Quran with you, I want you to raise your right hand up high. Up high. Give yourself a stretch. Give yourself a stretch. And let your voice be heard. And proclaiming what's truly within your heart. Say it like you believe it because I know you do. Allah is my Lord. 
Allah is my Lord. Allah is my Lord. The Quran is my book. The Quran is my book. The Quran is my book. Islam is my religion. Islam is my religion. I can't hear you. Islam is my religion. Muhammad is my prophet. Muhammad is my prophet. Muhammad is my prophet. Ali is my Imam. Ali is my Imam. Ali is my Imam. Ahsantum salawat. I want you to take the energy that you feel in your heart. I want you to take the emotion that you're bringing with you tonight and look at it very closely. When we're going back into the history to understand what happened to these individuals that have the honor of saying what? The greatest tragedy to ever be faced by mankind was that in Waqa'at al-Taf, in the land of Karbala on the day of Ashura. I want you to think carefully and examine your emotion you're feeling tonight. What's in your heart tonight? What's in your heart? Nobody knows but you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very personal. No matter if you're shedding tears or you're not, no matter if you're wearing black or you're not, I want you to take this personal journey for you. What's in your heart? As you're listening to these stories, I want you to realize these were real lives, real experiences, more real than you and I. Because of the impact that they had, the legacy that they left behind. You and I, we have the honor of doing what? Can we attach ourselves to that legacy? Can we say that I know my Imam? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, the man or woman who dies not knowing the Imam of their time, the Imam being what? Their leader, their divine guardian. The man or woman who dies not knowing the Imam of their time, dies a death of jahiliya, the death of the age of ignorance, meaning the time that preceded Islam. You and I, brothers and sisters, we have the honor of saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. When we have that honor, make it not something that's merely said on your tongue, but a practice in your every single day life. So when I'm looking at this number right here, and I'm seeing 1188, this is a testament of what? I know the Imam of my time. My Imam is 1188 years old, and he's the one who has dedicated his life to live like Hussein. He, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, is the Imam and the Hussein of our time. You want to live like Hussein? You want to be like Hussein? You want to commit yourself to Al Hussein alayhi salam, who is the ship of salvation and that light of guidance that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi guaranteed and confirmed to all of his companions and his followers. When the Prophet would speak to his companions, the young Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, only five years old, would come up into the lap of Rasulullah. The Prophet would hug him, kiss him, and in the middle of his sermon, he would look at his companions and he would say, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Ahab Allah man ahabba Husayn. Husayn is from me, and I am from Husayn. Allah loves those who love Husayn. So you and I, brothers and sisters, every single night, every single story, whether it be the reenactment that you just saw about Fatima al-Alila, the young daughter of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam who was too sick to join him in his journey, or any other story that you're going to hear, tonight we're going to be examining the 10-year period that came after the death of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Every night we're covering approximately roughly about a decade in examining the first 100 years of Islam in order for us to understand the past 1,000 years. Engaging in this journey of history is essential for you building depth into your faith because no one here 
I want to confirm this here tonight by saying what? You want to see a reality, you want to see something in your life, you have to say it to yourself and you have to make it known within you. We are not shallow. We are not a superficial community. We as followers of Ahlul Bayt, as Muslims dedicated to La ilaha illallah, we are deep. So don't busy yourself with the conversations that you know are beneath you. Don't busy yourself with being distracted by the people you know you shouldn't be distracted by. When you're coming here tonight, and you're listening to the tragedy of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and you're honoring his memory and the memory of his grandfather Rasulullah, I want you to dig deep within yourself and see every story I hear, every reference that's made, every theological point that's analyzed and brought forward. I want you to tie that into your relationship with Al Hussein, your relationship with Imam Sahib al Asri was Zaman, with your relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and ultimately your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these Imams and our Prophet are what? The pointers to Allah. The pointers to Allah. When the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, in the last year of his life, the farewell pilgrimage. He was divinely directed through the Archangel Gabriel. The instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came. Give this message to the people. So the Prophet knew that he had to give this message to the people. And that message was what? A final commitment to the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al Mu'mineen. That who is to be followed after the Prophet? None other than Ali. And that is what we know in history to be the event of Ghadir. Where the Prophet had called all of the individuals that had gone ahead after the pilgrimage. They had gone ahead. They were going back home. And the people that were lagging behind, they came to a place called Ghadir Khum. And at that place, the Prophet had instructed his followers to assemble a pulpit. Saddles rugs, clothing, whatever they could grab, boulders, rocks. They assembled them so that the Prophet could stand ahead of his people, so that they all could see him. Imagine a stage like this. So that he can see all of his people and they can all see him. And he would give a sermon to his people reminding them of what he had taught them over the past two decades. And he finished those reminders, those instructions with saying, Oh my people, am I not the one who has more authority over you than you do over yourselves? And they said, Bala ya Rasulullah, of course, O oh Messenger of God. So he said, Faman kuntu mawla, hadha aliyun mawla. Allahumma wali man wala, wa'adi man ada, wansur man nasara, wakhdul man khadala. The statement was clear. Mind you, the Prophet the summary of what he said, whoever I'm his master, this Ali is his master. Who was there? All of the companions. Some narrations say that up to 100,000 people had joined and been there and testified to seeing what happened on the day of Ghadir. Now brothers and sisters, we go back and we see in history, okay, if it was so clear that Imam Ali was supposed to be followed, then why wasn't he the first caliph? Why wasn't he even closely following after the Holy Prophet ﷺ, who passed away in 632 AD? Why is it that Imam Ali ﷺ, it took over two decades for him to become the Khalifa? This is where you and I, when we're saying we're not shallow, we're not superficial, this is where we dig a little bit de deeper. And this is where you and I, as followers of Ahlul Bayt, we have a sophistication to know what? that there are sensitivities in Islam and there are sensitive points in our history. We are an intellectual people, critical thinkers. The Prophet did not raise blind followers. You are not blind followers. You, my dear brothers and sisters, are critical thinkers. And you are mature individuals. So that for example, if I'm going to engage in a conversation of sensitivity, I know how to do it and when to do it. Because guess what? We belong to a greater body of Islam. And though history 
was dictated in a certain way. And there are different versions of history with different groups and different interpretations. For example, the word Mawla, what does it mean? Wali, what does it mean? And those conversations can be had in an intellectual way. What does it mean? Was it Ali just a friend of the people? Or was he truly the people's champion and their leader and the successor and the heir of the Prophet? Not just at Ghadir Khum, but every single moment, every single occasion that required an individual to support the Prophet and show where does leadership lie? Where does the truth lie? It was with Ali. But when we engage in these conversations, we have to realize what? Brothers and sisters, we proudly say that we are Shia. We proudly say that we are followers of Ahlul Bayt. There's nothing to shy away from. And yes, as Shia, we have collectively as a community, as a minority within Islam, we've been persecuted throughout history. We can share stories of our own grandparents and how some others in different schools of thought have treated them, whether it be in private occasions or even by governmental authorities. The persecution that has been faced by the Shia community collectively across history is a study in its own. Look into your history, brothers and sisters. If you, if you look and you see what's going on in your history, you will see the challenges that you're facing today. You will understand how deep your heritage is, how deep your identity is. I want you to pay close attention to this, my dear brothers and sisters across the audience. I'm easily distracted by you, just letting you guys know. So on the front row, sisters, and the front row, brothers, if you keep your attention with me, I'm looking at you, each and every single one of you, not to put you on the spot, but I'm having a conversation. I'm not talking above your heads. I said this yesterday. Why am I saying this? I'm not here to tell you about all of these things that happen in history, and I'll pack my bags and I'll be on my way. I'm here to engage in this conversation for you, for us, collectively as a community. Don't wait for just one specific thing that you're looking for in your program here tonight. Whether it be the majlis, it be the latmi, a certain motivational thing that I'm going to say. Don't look for snippets. Engage, be present for the one hour. Why? This is a movement of yourself, your transformation. Even if you don't think there's anything that you need to change, I want you to challenge yourself. Because the memory of Rasulullah is too great for you to just gloss over it. And these subjects, when I'm talking about Sunni Shia discourse, for example. This is something that's real. This is something, for example, that student from the city of Dearborn that goes to a university across the country, whether it be Harvard or it's Yale or it's Stanford, and they're a true minority. You and I, brothers and sisters, we have a comfort here in the city of Dearborn that's beyond any other. When you go outside and you see and you experience what it feels like to be a true minority, I'm going to see how, how is your faith tested? Will you stay strong to your belief? Will you come and commemorate Imam Hussain all by yourself? This is easy for us. This is beautiful, great, wonderful. But when that's being challenged and you're all alone, what do you do then? What we produce as a community here in the city of Dearborn and everyone that's watching online across the country and across the world, and I wanted to take a moment to thank all of these individuals that are tuning in to listen to these stories, to give their attention, give their support to what the foundation here is trying to do. In educating people in a way of what? This isn't a mere heritage. This isn't just mere traditions. The traditions and the rituals are so noble and honorable and they must be preserved. But I want you to remember what? That this haraka, this movement of Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam was one that enlivened the heart and the intellect, the mind. Allow it for, allow yourself that experience. Allow yourself to be moved that way intellectually. So that when you are challenged by a Sunni brother or sister, to why do you dress in black? Why? Why do you beat your chest? Why? Is this something that is just a mere ritual? I will tell you. We beat our chest for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to feel an ounce, a grain in the sand of the trampling of the horses upon the chest of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, of the arrows and the spears that struck his body, dozens of wounds in his body, in the bodies of all of his companions and his brothers. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, his tragedy, 
What does it mean to you? You need to realize nothing that we have with Imam al Hussein, with the Holy Prophet, in our religion of Islam is done out of whim, is done out of mere ritual. That's not what the Prophet raised. He raised critical thinkers so that you and I, when we are challenged by other Muslims, and we are told, why do you keep talking about this? Why every year this? Why? What's the point? What's the point? It's to remember what La ilaha illallah was all about. It is to remember the sacrifice that was made to protect Muhammad Rasulullah. That even his grandson, the only remaining descendant of the Prophet, the one whom the Prophet would hold in his arms and say, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn, was killed by the people that said La ilaha illallah. So you and I, when we're facing the battleground in our hearts and our challenges here today, are you truly honoring La ilaha illallah? Are you truly honoring Muhammad Rasulullah? Or is it just something that you say? It's your choice. That is the greatness of the human being. That choice. So guess what? Tie that back into the event that happened after Ghadir Khum. When the people came and the Prophet ﷺ was dying. And the Prophet ﷺ asked for something to write on and something to write with so that he can further instruct people and show them in his last moments what they should hold on to. Because even if it wasn't clear enough to the 100,000 people that were there at Ghadir, he said, I still want to guide my people and make sure they understand. They understand that it's all about the Qur'an and my family, Ahlul Bayt, because they preserve one another, they protect one another, they are together until the day of judgment. But then the Prophet, at his deathbed, the people around him, what did they say? Leave him be. He's hallucinating. Hasbuna kitabullah. The book of God is enough for us. Some of us brothers and sisters today, we even say, where, where do you Shia, where do you people bring all of the stuff from? Is it in the Qur'an? Is it in the Qur'an? Tell us. Is it in the Qur'an? Brothers and sisters, let's be intellectual here. Is the number of your rak'at and your prayer in the Qur'an? Something so, something so small, an everyday prayer. I won't even go further with any further examples. Is the Qur'an an encyclopedia of everything you need to know in your faith? No. That's why the Holy Prophet ﷺ said what? Kitabullah wa atrati my family. Emphasizing that. But some people, even before the Prophet died, said, Hasbuna kitabullah. So anytime you hear somebody, with all due respect to all of our brothers and sisters from across every school of thought, and know this, Though I may disagree with you, and though I may actually call this out and say, the person who says that Hasbuna Kitabullah is enough, the Book of God is enough for us, you're following the Sunnah, the tradition of an individual, not the Prophet. You're not following the tradition of the Prophet, with all due respect. Because the Prophet, when he heard that Hasbuna Kitabullah, this person blatantly going against the instruction of the Prophet, please give me something to write with. The Prophet's on his deathbed. Hasbuna kitabullah. The man is hallucinating. Beyond even looking at the, at the audaciousness of the individual to say that the Prophet was hallucinating. He said, Hasbuna kitabullah. The Prophet told him, leave. He told them all, leave. Leave. So when somebody tells you, oh, if it's not in the Quran, I don't follow it. Okay, you're not following the Prophet. The Prophet was not a, a person who merely brought the Quran for us and said, hey, follow everything in this book and nothing else. The Prophet was the messenger of God, the one who implemented the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was to be emulated and followed. That is why we look at the Prophet and everything he did and he didn't do. That's why we love and adore him so much. That was his role as the representative of Allah. And the Imam, the successor, the heir of the Prophet is who? The person who continues to implement that will. And that will will continue to be implemented and manifested until the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his justice, now taking back this back theologically in our creed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his oneness, after his oneness, he is just. 
And because he is just, he brings us prophets to share his message. And with that justice, he brings us imams to be successors of those prophets to continue to implement his will. So that you and I in the day of judgment, we don't go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Ya Allah, I was not guided. Allah makes the proof so clear to us through that prophet and the imam. So that when you're looking at this history and you're seeing the people that did not follow Rasulullah, even if they were companions of the Prophet, even if they were close individuals to the Prophet, they did not follow him and they chose a different path without going deeply, brothers and sisters, into the motivations of individuals, whether they be noble motivations or not. You can look at the context and analyze for yourself. You can go and look at the scholars of history that analyze these individuals and see what did they even describe for themselves at the later points in their lives. But we know for sure was what? When Imam Ali alayhi salam was burying the Prophet, a group of people from the companions of the Prophet went to a place called Saqifa. And they had a meeting to discuss what? Who would lead the Ummah after the Prophet? From the Muhajirun and the Ansar. From the people that, remember when we were talking the past nights, the Muhajirun being the people that migrated with Rasulullah from Mecca to Medina, and the people in Medina, the Ansar. While Imam Ali alayhi salam was burying the Prophet, wouldn't you think that Rasulullah now having nearly or even more than a hundred thousand followers, all people saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that the Prophet would have a massive funeral? No, he didn't. In fact, many of his companions were not even there. So what do Ahlul Bayt do with the reality of people's choice? Tying this back to what? Free will. You and I, we have the choice. It may be as clear as day as what you have to do in your life. But you have the choice. Guess what? People at that time, they had a choice. We think, I wish I was at the time of the Prophet. I wish I was at the time of the Imam. Things would be so much clearer for me. Things would be so much easier. I'd be so much better of a person because I could see my Imam. I could see my Prophet. Brother, sister, people were sitting with the Prophet and they said he's hallucinating. People were sitting with him. What does that tell you and I? Your lifestyle is a reflection of your belief when it comes to being examined with the instructions of Rasulullah and ultimately the instructions of God. Anytime we find ourselves, and I'm speaking to myself first, this is a reflection. If you want to be better, you have to face the hard facts. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to see, what am I facing? If you're not ready to admit, hey, I'm doing this wrong, then you're not going to get better. But guess what? It's okay. Because we're human. You can make mistakes. You can mess up. But are you going to continue making mistakes and messing up and saying, ah, later, when I get older. It's okay later on. You know what the people explained? The first Khalifa, the second Khalifa. The th they explained, well, we didn't follow Ali because we didn't think people were going to follow him. We didn't follow Ali and we constructed a new government because we didn't think people were going to follow him. Why? Because Ali was young, one. Two, Ali had made many enemies. Why? Because he was the champion of every single battle. So Ali, these people that ended up coming into the fold of Islam, we, I mean, he killed a lot of their fathers and their brothers and their cousins. So people weren't going to follow him. So we did the best thing that we thought was for Islam. Now again, Without going further and examining these motivations and seeing are these intentions as they are or not, and say, okay, come on. But you and I can do what? When we're engaging with conversations with people out of other schools of thought, know that there's a sensitivity there. Know that you and I have to search for truth and know why we follow what we follow and ask critical questions. But when you engage in conversations in these sensitive periods in history, in this transition, be like Imam Ali alayhi salam. How was Imam Ali? Did Imam Ali alayhi salam, when they took the caliphate and they constructed an administration, they constructed an administration that was void of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they put the reality in front of him, Imam Ali alayhi salam did what? He made the truth shown. He verbalized, articulated the position with them and saying, you know who has the right to this and who doesn't. You know what you are doing. 
But when they insisted on continuing what they were doing and their plan for governance, Imam Ali alayhi salam, what did he do? When his own home was attacked, what did he do? When Lady Fatima alayhi salam, she was assaulted, what did they do? Dig deep into history, brothers and sisters, and see, see the reality that Imam Ali alayhi salam, even though his rights were taken away, even though Lady Fatima alayhi salam was assaulted, even though their home was desecrated, and that people would come to their home and say, knocking on the door forcefully, and saying, if they do not come out, and Ali does not pay allegiance to the first caliph, we will burn down this house. This was days, weeks after the Holy Prophet had passed. How is it that the Ummah changed so quickly? How did Imam Ali deal with all of this? How did he engage with these people? That even when some of those people, that posse, that gang that came and knocked and barged on that door, and said, we, and one of them said, I will burn the house down. They looked at each other and they said, are you serious? Fatima bint Muhammad is inside, you're gonna burn the house down? Even they were shocked amongst one another. And the one leading them said, what in? So what if Fatima is inside? Imam Ali alayhi salam was dealing with these individuals who had different motivations amongst each other. And they were adamant on rule. They were adamant on governance. So Imam Ali alayhi salam followed the instructions of Rasulullah to do what? Protect the body of Islam. And sacrifice his own personal rights. And he made it clear that I will المسلمين, I will give up my own personal rights so that I may protect the affairs of the people and so long as the rights and the affairs of the people are protected and only my personal rights are transgressed against and taken away I will acquiesce now you see the movement of Ahlul Bayt السلام, throughout history including the movement of Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam. Don't be confused, my dear brothers and sisters. Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam, in his rise in Karbala, his rise was the same and within the policy and the operation, the strategy of Imam Ali alayhi salam, which was what? Protecting the body of Islam. That's the priority. Government was not the priority. Ruling was not the priority. Politics and being at the political helm was not the priority. But Ahlul Bayt were never disengaged from the political process. Ahlul Bayt were never disengaged from the center of decision making. So that Imam Ali السلام, even in those dark, dark days that he endured with the death of Rasulullah and the death of his wife Lady Fatima السلام, do you Im can you imagine the heart of Imam Ali السلام, that he had to endure his wife being assaulted and his house being desecrated and that Imam Ali السلام, even though he had individuals within the grasp of his hand and he could have crushed their skulls and he'd make it known on that day I would have crushed your skulls if it was not for the wasiyah, the will of Rasulullah it wasn't Imam Ali السلام, being passive and being taken away Imam Ali alayhi salam made it known on that day. You know what you are doing. You're using this free will, this choice of yours, to make this devilish venture of yours, to take away this and create something of your own. And you know you have no right to it whatsoever. Why are we delving into this history? So that you and I can know truth from falsehood. So that you and I can see that even when we engage in the very difficult conversations of the day, it's to do what? It's actually to bring people closer to one another. Because Imam Ali, brothers and sisters, he didn't ever disrespect anyone, no matter what. Imam Ali alayhi salam, in the greatest challenges that he faced, and then tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be examining when he came to rulership, 25 years later, as the Khalifa himself, and the Muslims would fight him, and he would face three civil wars, how he would show people, even when it comes to Muslim-Muslim confrontation, 
How do you preserve people's rights? And how do you honor your fellow mankind? How do you engage with people? But throughout this period of time, especially under the first two caliphates, Imam Ali alayhi salam would take the very hard role of being an advisor to the individuals that took his rights away and dishonored his family. Lady Fatima alayhi salam, before she died, because she died before she even reached the age of 19. So anyone that tells you that she died a natural death, Think again. Lady Fatima alayhi salam died before she even reached the age of 19. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, when she instructed him and she told him, Ya Ali, bury me in the night and make sure that none of those individuals walk in my funeral. Bid'atu Rasulillah, the peace of the heart of Rasulullah. The Prophet would say, My Fatima, she is. A piece of my heart. She is the light and the apple of my eye. Fatima Sayyidatun Nisa al Alameen. She is the greatest of all of the women that ever existed. Fatima, the best woman to walk this earth, didn't even reach the age of 19. Now, to my young brothers and sisters, I want you to think about that. The best woman to walk this earth lived less than two decades. Now you're going to think to yourself, you're not capable? Now you're going to think to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm too young? You're too young? Too young for what? Too young to be great? Too young to be successful? Too young to be educated? Too young to break that glass ceiling? Too young? Lady Fatima alayhi salam was a universe herself. Lady Fatima alayhi salam. What? Lady Fatima. Do we even know who Lady Fatima is? When the Prophet himself is saying, Ummu Abiha. Can you imagine that? He said, my daughter. My daughter Fatima. It's like a mother to me. She cared for him. Not just by being there and giving, her, giving him warmth. But understanding his struggle and seeing the future ahead, Lady Fatima alayhi salam, she would be the advocate of Rasulullah and the advocate of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And that everything that our Imams have are from her. From her. I want you to see this, especially my young sisters. The power of Lady Fatima. You want to look for someone to look at? You want to see who do, who do I look at? Who do I follow? Who should I be like? Less than two decades of a life. Didn't even reach the age of 19 and she was the best woman to walk this earth. What was her secret? What did she do? She did what the Prophet did. Committing herself to La ilaha illallah. Because when you realize the rope of Allah and the greatness that lies in holding on to that rope, you can do anything. You're unstoppable. Who's going to stop you when you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he says in dua Arafah, he says, Ya Allah, what has he lost that found you? And what has he found that lost you? It's all back to God. If anything in your life is void from that connection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want you to think twice about it. But if you want to be shallow, if you want to be superficial, go right ahead. It's up to you. I don't think you're shallow. I don't think you're superficial. I don't think somebody that is coming to the majlis of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, I don't think that this individual that wants to be inspired, wants to be motivated, regardless of what you've gone through, regardless of the challenges that you're facing, regardless of the doubts that you have in your heart, it's okay. But don't stop at doubt. Don't stop at the question. Find the answer because the answer is there. And when people from outside of your circles or even within your circles give you trouble, give you these questions, give you these doubts, keep on moving forward to get the answers for yourself. Because Imam Ali alayhi salam and Lady Fatima and the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon them, what did they do? Even when the world was against them, they stood firm in their faith and they didn't let go. And they didn't isolate themselves either. I want, you to keep, I want you to keep this in mind. They didn't isolate themselves either. 
So Imam Ali alayhi salam, even with the individual that assaulted his wife and attacked his home, he put him in his place and he told him, you know what you are doing. But I will not leave the will of the Prophet because the Prophet told me, Ya Ali, choose patience over the adversity and do not rise against those who will attack you and take your rights away. So Ali was patient and he said, the Prophet told me, stay your chest to the ground. So I stayed my chest to the ground and I chose patience over the adversity. And though there was suffocation in my throat and a pricking in my eye, I chose patience over everything else. Don't let go of that patience with Imam Ali alayhi salam. Don't take it lightly. The second caliph would say, Lawla Ali, la halika Umar, about himself. If it were not for Ali, I would have been perished. I would have been destroyed. That was the honor of Ali. Even those individuals that stood against him, he still protected and saved Islam. Because that's what all he lived and died for, was to save Islam, to save La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So you and I, we have a choice tonight. Do you dedicate yourself to that life? Do you dedicate yourself to that honor? Do you make that happen for yourself? It's your choice. your choice. Brothers and sisters, I want us to look back to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in that struggle that he had in leaving Medina, leaving his home. Because when he was leaving his home, he didn't just leave behind the grave of Rasulullah, the burial place of his mother, Lady Fatima alayhi salam, the burial place of his brother Al-Hasan, each one of them, who he sat down at their graves, and he spoke to them. And the Prophet came to him in a dream, and said, Ya Hussein, you will be coming to us soon, and we miss you. But Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam, he also had to bid farewell to his daughter Al-Alila. Al-Alila means the sick one, the ill one. Her name was Fatima. Imam Hussein alayhi salam named his daughter Fatima after his mother Fatima. If I tell you this tale of sorrow, will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? If I tell you this tale of sorrow, will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? And if we stay here tonight until tomorrow, Will you bear this tale of sorrow? Listen here to Hussein's story, a story of heartache and glory, a story of heartache and glory. Before the day of Ashura, before the land of Karbala, when Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was leaving his home in Medina. He would leave behind some of his family. And one of them was his daughter, Fatima Al-Alila. Imagine the scene as Imam al Hussein, his daughters, his sons, his friends, his companions, his brothers are all packing their things, bringing their caravan, their horses, their camels, saddling upon their horses. And Imam al Hussein is about to leave his home. He goes to his young daughter, Fatima, and he tells her, my dear Fatima, I wish to bid you farewell. I want to say goodbye to you, my beloved Fatima. 
And she tells him, Father Hussein, where are you going? Baba Hussein, am I going with you? Imagine the heart of a father, but not any father. This is Al Imam Al Hussein needing to leave his daughter behind. I want you to imagine with me as Al Imam Al Hussein is holding the face of his daughter Fatima, telling her, My dear, you can't come with me. You won't survive the journey. You have to stay home and get well. But Fatima, at her young age, all she sees is something separation from her father Hussein so she cries to him Baba Hussein why do you leave me behind Baba Hussein please don't go Imam al Hussein holding his daughter, telling her, My dear, everything will be fine. But imagine the heart of an Imam al Hussein when he knew his fate in Karbala, when he knew he would not return. Imagine telling your daughter, My dear, everything will be fine. But you won't see her again. Al Imam Al Hussein embraces Fatima, holds her tight in his arms as he wipes away her tears. And he tells her, My dear, get well. You will see me soon. Brothers and sisters, after the day of Ashura, months later when the journey took place and in the land of Karbala, when Al Imam Al Hussein gave his life on that day when Al Abbas was killed, when Al Qasim was killed, when Ali Al Akbar was killed, when all the companions had fallen on the day of Ashura, and Al Imam Al Hussein was massacred and killed. And Lady Fatima and the women and the children were taken as prisoners. And they were taken from town to town, paraded to the Muslims. People thought that they were from another nation. They didn't even know who they were. When they went from Kufa to Damascus, and finally, they came back home to Medina months later. Lady Zainab, before she entered Medina, she told Imam Zain al Abideen, my nephew Ali. I don't wish to enter Medina without the people of my city knowing what happened to me and my family. So Al Imam Zain al Abideen sought out the guide that had taken them from Damascus to Medina. His name was Bish. He told him, I know that your father was a poet and was a man of virtue. Will you recite some poetry so that the people of Medina will know what happened to my father Hussein? 
He placed his hand on his chest and he bowed his head and he sighed. And he sended upon his black horse, draping himself and his horse with a black flag. He marched into Medina, waving that black flag, calling out to the people of Medina, Ya Ahlul Medina. O oh, people of the city of Rasulullah, come gather, come from all far and near, come gather for the news that I must give to the people of Medina. They said, O oh, Bish, what news do you have? He said, This news can only be shared at the grave of Rasulullah. So the people gathered the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands that came to the mosque of Rasulullah. And Bishr would wave the black flag and he would say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Al-Husayn, Qutil Al-Husayn, Al-Husayn has been killed. The people wailing and crying, how is it that Hussein was killed? He said, I will tell you how he was killed. He was killed all alone. قتل الحسين عطشانا قتل الحسين وحيدا he was killed thirsty he was butchered he was massacred and he was all alone brothers and sisters on that day one of the individuals present was that young girl Fatima? Who would be reunited with her auntie Zainab? Imagine with me as Fatima Al Alila learns of the news of her father being killed. She jumps into the lap of her auntie Zainab. And Lady Zainab holds her tight. And Fatima begins to call out, not to her auntie Zainab, not to her brother Ali, but to her father Hussein. Baba Hussein, where have you gone? Baba Hussein, where are you now? In your lap, how I wish I would be. Oh, my father, oh, my father, hear your heart beat with love for me. Oh, my father, oh, my father, Fatima, Fatima, Fatima. Fatima, Fatima, Fatima. In your lap, how I wish I'd be. Oh, my father, oh, my father. Hear your heart beat with love for me. Oh, my father, oh, my father. 
In your lap, how I wish I'd be. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, in your lap, how I wish I'd be. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, everyone, in your lap, how I wish I'd be. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, in your lap how I wish I'd be. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father. In your lap, how I wish I'd be. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh, my Father, O oh, my Father, my name you'd whisper in the night. When from my dreams I woke with fright, calming me with just your kind sight, like the moon your face shining bright, my name you'd whisper in the night. When from my dreams I woke with fright, Calming me with just your kind sight, like the moon your face shining bright. My name you'd whisper in the night, when from my dreams I woke with fright. Calming me with just your kind sight. Like the moon, your face shining bright. Now from this nightmare, who'd free me? O oh my Father, O oh my Father, in your lap, how I wish I'd be. O oh my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh my, Father, oh my Father, in your lap how I wish I'd be. O oh my, oh my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. Named for your mother, Fatima, her stories you'd tell me with awe. On my heart, her name you would draw, a lady pure and with no flaw. Named for your mother, Fatima, her stories you'd tell me with awe. On my heart, her name you would draw, a lady pure and with no flaw. Now like you, an orphan, you see. O oh, my father, O oh, my father, hear your heart beat with love for me. O oh my, Father, oh my Father, in your lap how I wish I'd be. O oh my Father, O oh my Father, 
Hear your heart beat with love for me. When you said your final goodbyes Upon me I felt fell the skies Without water a small rose dies It cannot breathe even if it tries When you said your final goodbyes Upon me I felt fell the skies Without water a small rose dies It cannot breathe even if it tries Now what strength and life's left in me Oh my father, oh my father In your lap how I wish I'd be Oh my Father, oh my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. Oh my Father, oh my Father, how I wish I'd be. Oh my Father, oh my Father, hear your heart beat with love for me. Baba, your hands belong in mine. Through them I'd know that all was fine. You'd point and the stars would align. Your will is that of the divine. Baba, your hands belong in mine. Through them I'd know that all was fine. You'd point and the stars would align. Your will is that of the divine. Now I'm like a ship lost at sea. Oh my father, oh my father. In your lap how I wish I'd be. Hear your heart beat with love for me. Oh my Father, oh my Father. In your lap how I wish I'd be. Oh my Father, oh my Father. Hear your heart beat with love for me. You've set all our hearts ablaze With your love, oh, the angels praise Your memory they can't erase What's in the heart forever stays You've set all our hearts ablaze With your love, oh, the angels praise your memory they can't erase What's in the heart forever stays Now and till death with you I plea Oh my Father, oh my In your lap how I wish I'd be Oh my Hear your heart beat with love for me, oh my Father, oh my Father. In your lap how I wish I'd be, oh my Father, oh my Father. Hear your heart beat with love for me. Baba, your hands belong in mine. Through them I'd know that all was fine. You'd point and the stars would align. Your will is that of the divine. 
Baba, your hands belong in mine. Through them I'd know that all was fine. You'd point and the stars would align. Your will is that of the divine. Now I'm like a ship lost at sea. Oh, my father, oh, my in your lap, how I wish I'd be, oh my Father, oh my Father. Hear your heart beat with love for me, oh my Father, oh my Father. In your lap, Hear your heart beat with love for me. Oh, my Father, oh, my Father. You've set all our hearts ablaze. With your love, oh, the angels praise. Your memory they can't erase. What's in the heart forever stays. You've set all our hearts ablaze With your love, oh, the angels praise Your memory they can't erase What's in the heart forever stays Now and till death with you I plea Oh, my Father, oh, my Father in your lap, how I wish I'd be, oh my father, oh my father, hear your heart. In your lap, how I wish I'd be, oh my father, oh my father. Hear your heart beat with love for me, oh my Father, oh my Father. Hear your heart beat with love for me, oh my Father, oh my Father. السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن ال وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين